Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you, lovely lot? To... No, cut. Too much. What have I got for you, lovely lot, today? Well, there's definitely autumn vibes here in the UK. The leaves are beginning to fall off the trees. So we're going to be having a go at this local scene of a lovely autumn Sussex farmhouse. And it's also going to be a lesson in painting with a limited palette. So we're only going to be using three colours today. And I've got a short video at the beginning of this tutorial to help you with your colour mixing. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Oh, for goodness sake, it's too much. Okay, so today's materials are, my paper is some Saunders Waterford, 100% cotton, it's £140, it's on a block so it won't need stretching, but of course any decent watercolour paper will do. My brushes, four from my range, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number 6 round, and of course my trusty number 3 rigger. Next for my paints. Now Holbein is one of the big brands that I've yet to try, so I'm quite excited about using these. They are made in Japan and this is the six tube set. But I'm just going to be using three primaries today. The Permanent Yellow Deep, Cobalt Blue Hue and Crimson Lake. Now the others in the set are Burnt Sienna, Vermilion Hue and Viridian Hue. Now I do think it's a really good discipline to go back to the basics and paint with a limited palette. It's a great lesson in understanding the theory of colour and will help to give your painting harmony and balance. Now the first thing I've noticed about these paints is the amazing strength of pigment. I don't think I've ever seen a cobalt blue that is this intense before. I also like the choice of colours here, a warm yellow, a cool red and a sort of mid-range blue. So a very short lesson on mixing with three primaries first. So I'll always start with the lightest value colour first. Now let's mix our secondary colours by simply adding to the yellow a small touch of blue to get a very yellowy green. And it's obvious the more blue we add, the more bluey green the colour will be. But when we add the third primary to any secondary, it will neutralise it and then we start to get our browns and greys. Now I know a lot of artists will mix their browns from green and red. So next for our warmer colours, starting with our yellow and just adding in a touch of red for this lovely golden colour. And then adding more red will give us this sort of burnt orange colour. Then again, by adding in the third primary, the blue, it's neutralising it and taking it over to the brown. And in this case, a slightly warmer version. Okay, so let's mix a purple. Start with the blue then, and then add in the red. And as Crimson Lake is already a cool red, in other words, it has some blue in it, we should get a nice purple. Adding the third primary again, this time the yellow, it turns it into a mucky, muddy brown, but a gorgeous deep brown. Then add some more blue and we have a perfect neutral grey. Can we even get black? Well, yes, as close as we need to anyway, just by using more pigment in each of the three primaries. So today's painting has been done just using three primaries, which gives this painting a more coherent feel because all the colours have come from the same family. Okay, so this painting is based on several photo references as well as some sketches that I've just made up, but it's all very reminiscent of many country houses you get here in Sussex. And here is the pencil sketch, and this one again is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Off we go! And I'm wetting the sky with clean water, and I find a flat brush is perfect for painting around buildings like this one. Then in with some cobalt blue, and because these Holbein paints seem to be so highly pigmented, I don't need to use a strong concentrated mix. 
and I'm simply leaving gaps for the clouds and because I wet the paper first I'm getting lots of lovely soft edges. So just to make it easier I'll simply refer to the colours from now on as yellow, blue and red rather than the full paint name. But you can still paint this tutorial using any of the colours that you have. Next for the soft shadows under each cloud shape and I'm using a mix of all three colours for this but you could equally use some Payne's Grey. But what is important is that this wash remains still very wet. Here I'm just using a tissue to lift out a few more defined cloud edges. And using the same colour here for the side of the house. Now, while still wet, I'm sprinkling in a few granules of table salt, but very sparingly, to hopefully create the texture of Flintstones. No, I don't mean Fred and Wilma, but it is something that you see a lot of on houses and walls here in Sussex. And while I've still got the colour on my brush, let's paint in the lane here. and then dropping in a touch of warm green. Now all these browns and these neutrals I'm using are obviously still mixed from my three primaries and it would be impossible to give you all the exact colour ratios that I'm mixing on my palette today. So it's a good opportunity for you to practice your colour mixing to try and get something similar, not exact, to the colours that I'm using here. Now I hope that you can see that I'm holding my brush here right at the end to help me get a nice loose fluid brush stroke and working quickly like this also gives those lovely dry brush textures to the edges of these trees. Lots of mixing on the paper of browns and golds and greens. Here I'm dropping in just a few blobs of clean water to force a few back runs. And now scoring in with the sharpened end of my brush to create some nice grass texture. And of course a little splattering here for some extra texture. So next I'm going to dry this off, but when using a hairdryer, let it dry naturally first until the paint stops moving and then finishing it off with the hairdryer. Next for these distant trees, and I'm going for the dry brush technique, keeping the brush flat to the paper, using a slightly thicker consistency of paint, and just try and let the brush drag across the surface, picking up the texture of the paper. Now I always think it looks great for trees, and so much more natural than trying to paint in each individual branch and leaf. And I also like to drop in a little clean water to get a combination of the soft and the hard edges. Now for the roof and I'm obviously using a mix of just my red and yellow. And then dropping in some brown wet and wet. And again for this colour you can practice mixing from your three primaries. Same brown for the chimney, and then just adding a little touch of orange at the top of the pot. Again, this is something you see a lot of in these old Sussex farmhouses, is these features brought out in red brick. 
It also gives the chance here to see the texture created by the salt, which I think is quite successful in giving that effect of old flints. Next for this lovely golden colour, and if you watch the mixing lesson at the beginning of this video it will show you exactly how to get this mix. Now I always love to watch these colours mix and blend on the paper rather than in my palette. Okay, so now for a little bit of detail. So I've swapped to my number six brush, but I'm still trying to get a nice loose wobbly feel in each brush stroke. And all of these dark shadows here are painted wet in wet. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and it's got to be a pint of Sussex own Harvey's Best Bitter. It's the taste of Sussex. Okay, so next for this hedge, I'm starting with a very wet yellowy green and then painting in straight away a very dark value bluey green. So don't be afraid of the dark, come in nice and strong as it will help to give a nice deep contrast to the bank below. And again here using the back of my brush to score in some detail.
some nice golden orangey colours here to contrast with the trees above. using the back of my brush again. in with some nice dark splats and then softening with a quick spray of clean water. Continuing the cast shadows across the road, I'm using a dark grey only on the areas where the road is also grey. Next, just using this orangey colour to fill in a few of the bits which I missed. Next for the barn door, and feel free to paint this in any colour you like. But I fancy a nice bright blue. And while still wet, I'm lifting out a few light areas with a damp brush, but also dropping in a little orangey to stop it looking too newly painted and pristine. And now, probably for my favourite part, painting the trees. I'm starting with my number six brush. So once I've painted in the main trunk and branches, I'm then going to use my trusty number three rigger. Now the springiness of this brush is perfect for keeping the smaller branches looking fluid and not too stiff. It just goes where it wants to, creating this lovely taper stroke. I just couldn't be without it. Now if you can, always try and paint these branches with one quick stroke.
And while still wet, I'm also adding in some darker shadows to some parts of the tree. And while I've got my rigger brush, let's add in a few grass details. Right, next I'm reverting back to my number six brush for these very dark grey details. And as you can see, I'm now holding my brush much further down to gain a little more control. However, I'm still trying to get a nice loose feel, leaving gaps and painting those wobbly lines. And for this little window here, just two quick strokes. And I'm just dropping in a touch of clean water here to create a bit of light at the bottom. Less is more with these flint details. It's not a photographic representation, so always leave something for the viewer to fill in. Now for some final details with a creamy coloured pastel pencil. Now some watercolour purists would say this is cheating, but I say do whatever works for you. Because to use masking fluid on all these little branches would just be a nightmare and you'd never get that natural looking stroke you can get with a pencil or using opaque paint like gouache or acrylic. And if you're about to ask, no I don't use fixative, no I never find it necessary. And what I also love about pastel pencils is you can soften some of the edges with your finger.
there we go all done and this one in about three hours Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. It really is good practice and a great way of understanding the theory of colour just by painting in three colours. So, as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Please leave a comment, I do read every single one, I can't always reply to them all. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. So take care everyone, have a great week, cheers those bloody leaves again for goodness sake